Hi everybody, my name is Ranjit Sodi, and I'm here to talk to you guys about blockchains and just a general overview of what a blockchain is. Before we get started, this is all I'm hoping to cover. What's a blockchain? How would we ever implement a blockchain if we wanted to in JavaScript? Why do we care about a blockchain? Some of the challenges to blockchains and uh, where they're being adopted as of today, so the use cases. Um, very quickly, uh, diving into blockchain is a complicated topic, so let's get started with cryptography, step one. Uh, cryptography, as most of you probably are already aware, is the practice and study of techniques for securing communication. And it is the very basis for a blockchain, and we'll see why. Uh, block all blockchains use something known as a hash, and hence require a hashing function. A hash is just a numeric value produced from a fi uh, of a fixed length produced with any input data. A typical hash would look as such. Um, it's just a long series of random text uh, strings or numbers and characters together. Another topic that we'll come across when we are working on a blockchain is a nonce. A nonce is literally what it stands for. N once, number once. It is supposed to be a unique number throughout the life of a blockchain. So you should never be repeating the nonce. And the idea behind it is to prevent a certain type of attack called the play forward attack or play once attack. You can actually, uh, using a nonce, you can minimize those kind of uh, attack vectors on a blockchain. So that brings us to cryptography and JavaScript. How would we implement a hash, a nonce, or any other such function inside JavaScript? And the way to do that is to implement these using a couple of libraries that JavaScript gives us. In Node.js, we have the crypto library, which gives us the SHA-1 method. And uh, typically, a ha um, blockchain uses a SHA-256 method, which is another way of uh, creating a hash. Um, we'll use the crypto.js library, typically, in JavaScript. If you were ever to create a blockchain in JavaScript, we'll be using the crypto.js library and the SHA-256 method which produces a shot, um, hash that's almost unique. Um, given the same set of input data into this method, you will always get the exact same hash out. Uh, uh, there are a whole bunch of other libraries. There's, at some point, uh, this PowerPoint presentation is going to be online. You'll be able to see all of them. There are over th 30, maybe 40 libraries that can be used. So let's get on to the meat of this presentation. What is a blockchain? A blockchain, simply put, is a ledger of records that's arranged in data batches called blocks. Each block is cryptographically validated and linked together. That is a blockchain system. It looks as such. It starts with a genesis block, similar to a queue or a linked list, starts with a header. And every subsequent block points to the previous block's hash. Um, blockchain, the key note here is it is similar to a linked list, but is not a linked list. In a linked list, you typically have a pointer pointing to the next block. In a blockchain, you have a reference to the previous block's hash. So it is slightly similar, but nuanced in that sense. Um, a typical block in a blockchain would be consisting of at least five values, usually six, and they are as such. You've got an index on the block. You've got the previous hash. I, especially for, except for the genesis block, every block in a blockchain would have a previous hash pointing to the previous block. It'll have a timestamp, a data packet, and this is uh, very variable depending on what you're hoping to do with the blockchain. If it's a cryptocurrency, the data packet would actually have uh, currency ledger details. If it's a blockchain on uh, real estate transactions, that's what the data packet would have. And the random number, the nonce. All of these five elements together go into the creation of the hash of that specific block. And just to reiterate the point earlier, a typical blockchain would have tons of blocks, each block containing lots of data. Every block would have a signature, a hash, that is unique to that block. And the subsequent blocks would be pointing to that previous block's hash. So 
imagine a blockchain that has got 54 blocks as of this point. If somebody were to go modify block 52, block 53's previous hash would no longer match block 52's hash and hence the chain would be broken. Every subsequent block after block 52 would no longer have a valid hash. Modifying a blockchain that is long is near impossible unless you go in and calculate the hash for every subsequent block, which is why blockchains are considered immutable um, as data structures, because once a chain becomes long enough, you can't go in and modify uh, prior blocks without letting everybody know that the chain's broken or has been modified. Let's talk about another commonly misunderstood topic. It's called distributed ledgers. Most people immediately associate a blockchain to be equivalent to a distributed ledger. In fact, some use it synonymously. They're not. Most blockchains are distributed ledgers, but not all. They don't have to be. And all distributed, uh, uh, distributed ledgers are not blockchains. A distributed ledger is just a database that's distributed over multiple nodes, multiple sites on a network. Um, similar to what's on this picture. But realistically, um, the reason we are talking about distributed ledgers is uh, as it relates to a blockchain. If a blockchain is distributed, it becomes even more resilient to hacking and or change, simply because it becomes practically impossible for somebody to go in and modify individual blocks across all the different nodes that have distributed or copied the ledger. In a distributed blockchain, uh, the blocks would be replicated at every node. So the entire chain would be copied and replicated by every other node. That's the key message here. With that said, um, let's talk about the types of blockchains that exist today. The predominant types are public permissionless and private permission blockchains. A public blockchain, as the name implies, allows any participant to join in and add blocks to the blockchain, but they can't modify any blocks. A typical example would be any of the cryptocurrencies that are popular today, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. These are all public blockchains. You can add uh, blocks to the nodes, but you cannot modify existing blocks. Private blockchains on the flip side are a take on centralized databases. They allow users, since they're private, they are private and permission, they allow the network to determine whether changing a block is a valid exercise or not. Um, there are quite a few popular ones. In fact, most of the new blockchains are ideally private blockchains. JP Morgan Cor uh, has a blockchain called Corum. Fidelity is using a blockchain called Hyperledger. Almost every bank is attempting to create some form of private blockchain today. That's it. Let's talk about JavaScript, since we are in a JavaScript um, school. Blockchains can be implemented in JavaScript rather simply. Uh, they are, as I mentioned, similar to a linked list. What we are going to do in this sample example is talk about how quickly one could implement this in less than 100 lines. Um, create two classes. Class one is called the block. We are going to instantiate every block having certain properties. Um, in our example, this block is going to have at least five elements, the index, previous hash, timestamp, data, so on and so forth. And we'll also have a hash calculation method on this uh, class. And you'll create a second class, which is actually our chain. And that's going to have a few methods, specifically uh, creation of the very first block. It's a special block since it doesn't have a pointer to a previous block. And uh, the method to add and get the latest blocks. Add blocks and get the latest blocks. If we continue on with this example, at some point our chain is going to be big and we want to make sure that the chain is valid. So we'll create a method called is chain valid or whatever you want to name it to validate the authenticity of the chain. If any block in the middle of the chain has been modified, this method would tell us that the chain is not valid anymore. And finally, we instantiate it. I figured the uh, Full Stack Academy coin was long overdue, so let's create one. Uh, 
full stack academy coin as the uh, type new blockchain and then we just add blocks to it there you go we just created a new cryptocurrency if you wanted to issue this clearly it's not distributed and it's not secure and it's there are lots of issues with this but this is a very quick illustration of how one could instantiate something similar to a blockchain using JavaScript. Great. Why do we care? There's a whole host of advantages I hinted at uh, uh, that blockchains as a data structure offers that most other data structures lack. One, they're incredibly reliable. They're extremely resilient to change. Uh, data is immutable in a blockchain and they are very decentralized by nature by implementation and has as such you could take down one node take down two nodes take down most of the network and the chain would still persist that makes it rather unique uh, amongst data storage mechanisms the chains disintermediated what this means is typically on a blockchain you can interact with another kind of party without needing to go through third parties and hence, it's got its own advantages of being a trustless, yet fully transparent, trustful uh, chain. It's auditable and secure. By the very nature of its structure, any change on a blockchain is visible to everybody. And as such, it's uh, incredibly secure. And the final one is efficiency. Blockchains are extremely efficient in lowering the cost of transactions. Um, we'll get to. I'll touch on the use cases very briefly, but a few challenges do exist for blockchains as well. Um, key amongst them is standards. There are no standards today that govern application and or um, regulatory standards today that govern application across jurisdictions. So different governments are taking different stabs at what is acceptable to be stored on a blockchain and what isn't. Similarly, there are at least three or four industry standards associated with blockchain. So there's a lot of standard noise. And wherever there's standard noise, you end up having uh, a time period where people don't know what to implement. There are upfront costs to a blockchain. Blockchains, especially distributed ledger-based blockchains, require a massive network to be set up before they can be implemented. And as such, there's a huge cost associated with that. Separate from that, there is a cost on actual implementation of existing infrastructure that needs to be converted. And finally, we get to performance. A successful blockchain that has millions and millions of records usually starts suffering from latency issues and hence cannot be used for every use case. You won't be able to use a blockchain for high frequency trading as such, at least not for the foreseeable future. I won't go into details given the time constraints, but um, we, have an, we have numerous applications that are currently looking at leveraging a blockchain. There's obviously all the cryptocurrencies out there already. Most of the banks are looking at uh, doing derivative trading, repo trading, all different types of financial trades using blockchains because they al blockchains allow them to disintermediate certain existing incumbents. Um, logistics is a huge space for blockchains as well. Every major logistics company, including UPS and FedEx, are looking at implementing blockchains to do tracking of packages. Um, that, this slide just gives you a very brief hint at where all it could be applied. Any industry that's got a transaction can apply a blockchain. And with that, I'll close my presentation. I hope uh, this answered some of your key questions around what a blockchain is. Thank you.